All right. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Betsy Coe, and um, joining me tonight is, as co-host is Steve Greenwood. And, hello. Uh, I'm zooming in from Chicago. I've I've been a member of Wikitree for about four years now, um, and like like many people, I I came and joined. I thought it sounded wonderful, and then I got overwhelmed and I fled. <laughs> <laughs> you ran away. <laughs> yeah. And and then um I I met some really wonderful people, wiki treers, who you know just gave me a little pieces of information here and there. And um, you know, I got the confidence to 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 re-enter and, and really start building my my tree on WikiTree. And um it's been um a wonderful experience. I'm now a member. I've gone through the uh, the training trails for Canada and Scotland and partially through England. Um, so I'm a member of those projects and also so um, a member of the mentors project and the events committee. Um, and um, yeah, I, I spend a lot of daily time on Wikitree and it's my happy place. Steve, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, hi, I'm Steven. Uh, I've been a member since 2020. Uh, there was an event that may have spurred that. Uh, so yeah, uh, my grandmother, who sadly recently passed away. Uh, she did get me back into the hobby again. Uh, she sent me a, a really large pedigree chart and it sort of just went from there. And I was searching online and then I found that one of my cousins in Germany was adding a whole bunch of my ancestors or people I was like researching. So once I connected with him, the, the ball just kind of rolled from there. And then I found that I was just involved in a lot of different projects. And, and now I'm also on the events committee with Betsy as well. So, you know, we're responsible for putting things together like wiki games and upcoming wiki tree day uh and you know we we want to make this a community for people we don't want it to just be you know you working on your tree by yourself the idea is collaboration you know because we're, we're all working on the same shared world tree here and eventually at some point we're all going to connect right so uh that, that's kind of the idea behind it and we just want to keep supporting that you know community atmosphere and that, that aspect mm -hmm. yeah Wonderful. Well, we don't um, very often for these sessions, we have um, some people who step up in advance and say, yes, you know, I, I'll be the guinea pig and I'll let you look at my profiles. Um, no one stepped up this week. So mm -hmm. but um, uh, Elaine did ask some questions about privacy so we can start. So it's just going to be an open, really open, true Q&A. Um, and Elaine, do you have the uh, the profile IDs that Sure. So when you say the profile IDs, I give you the name dash and the number. Is that it's, what? Exactly. And yes. I'll tell you what, why don't I screen share and um, okay, get myself to the WikiTree homepage, move you guys down. Okay. All right. So uh, what is, what is the first? Uh, the, first, the, the last name is Switzer, S-W-I-T-Z-E-R. Uh -huh. And yep. S-W-I-T-Z-E-R. Uh -huh. And um, the number is 1843. 1843. Uh, Michael, I'm going to mute you. There we go. Sorry, oh. Mike. All right. You tell me if that, look, does that look right, Elaine? Yes. So Arthur David Switzer is my grandfather uh -huh. and I entered not only my grandfather, but also do you see like, you know, it's listed his birth date and then it goes down to father of, mm -hmm. and, and then the nine children are listed, but I don't know how I did it. Some of them are ended up with private profiles and they're not necessarily meant to be private. Do you, okay. do you see if you, yes. a few of them are? I do. And, and do you see on screen, I'm, I'm looking right at your grandfather's profile. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So the key, the key to privacy is up here in the upper right hand corner. Right. So um, this green unlocked profile uh, icon mm -hmm. shows that it's an open profile. Um, okay. so, and there's no, you know, anyone can come in and um, make changes and, you know, hopefully they collaborate with you. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, you've got the profile manager, I see, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but um, 
Now, if we click on this, it's going to take us to a page that explains all the different sorts of privacy levels. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can go as restricted as completely unlisted, mm -hmm. um, which would, and each of these has a description, um, mm -hmm. private. Um, for, for most living members, these um, private with public family tree or private with public biography and family tree are what you want so that so that other people can know who you are and and um you know reach out to collaborate mm -hmm. so okay. yes so, so now that i know that how do i so for the first one that's listed which is um uh i guess my uncle donald robert do i click to his profile then and just go into that lock icon well, and change it well, since, no, okay, so let me show you. Um, okay. The way you change it is this mm -hmm. privacy tab. Okay. Over here. You would click on that and mm -hmm. then you would be able to, now I, the profile manager has to, or someone on the trusted list has mm -hmm. to, but you would, you would um, select what you want. And mm -hmm. then uh, I think there's a save button there. But I can't do that because I'm okay. No, no, that's fine. I just wanted to know how I did it. So yep. I mean, my grandfather's, as you can see, is is open. It's unlocked, right? So it's public. But right. I would need to go into my uncle's then, Donald Robert Switzer. Right. Well, it actually looks like because I can see Donald's, he is well, let's see. What is he's that already like? deceased and so he has a green lock. He's privacy level. <clears throat> public and you are the profile manager right right um so we can see him but the person we can't see is this um these these children would be listed in birth order yes so does donald have an older brother no hmm. oh, i'm sorry yes my father leslie yeah. okay so it yes. looks like this um as you can see on my screen it's listed as private son, 1930s to unknown. That's your father. Mm -hmm. You see, I can't even see him. Yeah. And if right. he's still living, it should remain like that if he's not a member. Oh, I see. Because he's not a member. Yeah. Yeah. If you invite him as a member, then he can have a somewhat visible profile. He can still control the privacy of that profile. So, you know, if he wants to lock it down to a red, he can do it. But if he wants to be a little more accessible, you know, he can have an orange or a yellow like we do. Um, okay. But as a person who's living who doesn't have a profile, automatically has to be unlisted for privacy purposes. I see. I, that's the part I didn't understand. Okay. Yeah. So I guess the system, because, well, I entered the information because he's living, Yep. then that's why it automatically then defaulted to this. Right. right? It, it automatically assumes that if you don't give it a death date, that the person is still living. And yeah. so it enlists them. But it still allows you to connect to the tree because the great thing about WikiTree is that it has that privacy level for those living people. And then it can cut through to the deceased individuals so you can do your research. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's that's just why you don't see him. And... Yeah, there's some comments here from Stephen regarding that as well in the chat. Oh, yeah. Let's see what uh, um, you can go to his profile and edit and scroll down to the email, add his email and save. Yeah. Right. And that's how you would invite a person to join Wikitree and then they would be the profile manager of that profile. Yeah. So the challenge is my father is 91. His right. ability to manage this is right. Uh, not there. So, um, you know, I will be with him um, in a week's time. So um, I can just verbally go through all of the information with him. And sure. if he consents, then I can set it up for him then. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like, um, I wonder, Steve, would you know, so if it says 1930s to unknown, I wonder if Elaine really clicked living. Well, I mean, if, it, if it's not provided, it just assumes that the person's living. Okay. So the death date has to be entered to create a deceased mm. profile. But there's, mm. 
but there's a, an, an option, a radio okay. button that says still living, I believe. Well, yeah, but you don't necessarily have to click it. Like if yeah. you click it, it's a confidence marker, right? Right. Uh, right. So I mean, that definitely will activate it. Uh, but l let's look at her profile. Let's just go to Elaine really quick and click on her ancestors. I want to see, you know, if we can see oh, sure. like what the okay. public would look at when they see her family tree. There um, you go. So go ahead and click on ancestors. Mm -hmm. And we, yeah, we can see that the private, the father's private, the mother is deceased. So she's okay. accessible. But mm -hmm. yeah, this is what people would see from the outside looking in. You can see your father because you created his profile and your mm -hmm. profile manager. But mm -hmm. this is what people should be seeing on the outside looking in. Okay, right. I guess that's what, yeah, that's what confused me. Okay, so that's very helpful. Thank you. If yep, I can no show, show you one thing, um, just from the perspective of here's here's my profile, and therefore, and you see, I have this, uh, I have. Um, private private with public bi biography and family tree but of course i can see everything because it's my yes, yes. but if right, i right. want to see what will somebody else see i can, uh -huh. will have this little hyperlink and then i will see um you know it's no longer going to give my exact birthday okay um, i got it mm -hmm. yeah so but anything it. that you typed in the biography is still visible uh-huh mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful with biographies. You can type information in your biography, but if it's birth and death information, you know, that could override the whole point of the privacy on the rest of the page. So you mm -hmm. have to be careful with what you put in the biography. Right. And sometimes people will list things like list things in the bio that will totally defeat the purpose of the privacy setting. Right. Yeah. Okay, now if someone, um, so I, uh, my aunt, Lynn Switzer, uh -huh. um, she passed away in March, and so I added her uh, death date onto the profile, but I still notice in what you, what you had for my grandfather that hers was still private, is it not? Well, she is, I haven't memorized the colors yet. I really should. She's private with a public tree. It could be because of how recent she passed away. Okay. There there may be some buffer built in the system. Uh, but if you're able to, I mean, since you are a profile manager, if you're able to select a different version that shows more information, you know, that that's a little more accessible. Mm -hmm. um, you, you would want to want to you would select the green option so the green option would be public um, but again it would not be open because uh, those are for profiles that are old you know at least 100 years yeah. old and then anybody right. can edit those um, right. so you still want to have some privacy for editing mm -hmm. okay well that again very helpful thank you okay yeah. and again it's your discretion you don't have to unlock that you can still keep yes. it to this level of privacy if you choose to because of how recent mm -hmm. it happened. Um, mm -hmm. So that is completely up to you what you decide to do with that. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I think the only other thing, let's see if I can get these numbers right. If a person was, if a person died more than 100 years ago or was born more than 150 years ago, yeah. their, quite, thanks, Stephen, their profile is required to be unlocked. So it's just a automatic thing. Okay. And again, that's the, that's for collaboration purposes, because if people are not accessible for editing, then the tree doesn't grow. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, any other questions? Hmm. No, I just, um, th that was the one that just really befuddled me. Otherwise I've, I've been able to, um, to manage. And I am curious when I create a family tree. So if we go to my, um, my grandfather, Arthur David okay. Switzer again. Yeah. Uh, let me, there we go. Okay. And so if I wish to create a family tree for him to go back as far as possible, because we, I believe it's his like great, great, great grandfather from 1648 or something or other but right. the trees that i seem to be able to build don't go back that far 
Okay, well, let's see what we've got so far. I just clicked on Ancestor from oh, so Ireland. Okay. These are Spencer's yes. from Ireland. That's right. They were from the um, from Germany and migrated to, to Ireland and then came to Canada. So if you go up to um, the far right to Adam Switzer, like yeah. there's several... It sounded more of a German or a Swiss name because Switzer is Swiss and German. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if they actually came from Switzerland. Uh, actually, we have information that goes back to the 1400s that most likely that um, came from Switzerland, mm -hmm. um, but then moved to Assenheim in Germany and then migrated to um, wow. to Ireland and then to Canada. Wow. Pathway, so. so they've gone through we, four countries and they're and technically five countries because the United States. Mm -hmm. That's that's mm -hmm. actually pretty impressive, I think. Let's uh let me just take a yes. look at Adam. Okay. Yeah. Um have you been in touch with uh the profile manager? Just seems like uh collaboration. There's two of them actually. Yeah. Well, actually, um, she and Deborah Dirks have done tremendous amounts of work. And so if you see on the right hand side, um, mm -hmm. you'll see a name, Deborah Dirks. Oh, and so yeah. Deborah Dirks is the fourth cousin I was telling you about, Betsy. Oh, that, OK, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's how we connected. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at this family tree now, you'll see it goes back further. And so my my question is like, how do I create a mm -hmm. one fulsome family tree that goes from Arthur David all the oh, way up to Johan? Yes. Okay. We in have... this lovely pictorial way, not in the list way. <laughs> right. Right. And I mean, right now we are limited by the size of the screen. But... Oh, but there is an app. It's the dynamic family tree is what we want to look at. Okay. So let me, it sounds like I should go back to Elaine's grandmother. Arthur. Arthur. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not here. And we go to tree apps. Wait. Oh, that's, that's Donald, not Arthur. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, you want to, this is a very handy bar. So tree mm -hmm. apps. Yes. Okay. I yeah. imagine you want to print this off or something, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, so here there's a pull down mem menu. So you want Stephen the dynamic dynamic tree, tree. yeah. Right. Okay. It uses JavaScript to be able to uh, exponentially uh, expand, so it's dynamic. Okay. And this also shows children as well. Okay. Uh, this can get out of hand really quick. So all right, and I see that I can make it smaller to add more fit, to make it fit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And there, there, there. Yeah, I see what you mean, Stephen. It's getting out. <laughs> now, the this computer is, might slow down too. Yeah, this is the one where I had clicked on the profile. Exactly. And now we can no longer see all of it. But yeah, I would say that. Uh, and Zoom it's just, out a little bit. Of click on the. Yeah, yeah. There. Yeah, remember when I had that slide that I showed uh, Christopher with like everything extending out for oh, him yeah. all the way back to Charlemagne? Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't also, even see the boxes I just, anymore. <laughs> I, can, I can see how you're building it, but also with my grandfather, Arthur, his children. So do you see on the left yep. there? Yep. It just says yep. Lynn and, and Donald. Those are only the ones that are deceased. There are five, like there were nine children. But those, the ones you're not seeing are the ones whose privacy levels. Yeah, 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 exactly. And so the, yeah. until I get those opened, I can't really create it. But I, okay, that's wonderful. Yeah, Thank you. Um, well, you can keep, I guess you can keep clicking on uh, Switzers and see how far back they go. Yeah, so. let's see. All right, I've got all of those. Oops, no, I missed here and here. Not an expand all button, huh? I don't Isn't think you want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to kill Wookie Tree? This is how you kill Wookie Tree. <laughs> um, Elaine, I'm curious, are you pre-1700 certified? Uh, I, I, I don't know what that means. I'm okay. Uh, just um, So Wikitree has a system in place. Um, since things get, uh, you know, the branches get a little thinner pre-1700, um, there's just a, like a, a page 
that talks about how, finding reliable sources. There's a there's a quiz you take, and once you've passed the quiz, then you're considered pre seventeen hundred certified. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, again, my fourth cousin that connected me, yeah, or connected with me, is the one who created these profiles that go way way back. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at this. I am just not running out of plus signs. And uh, it's starting yeah. to run into our research because I'm part of Germany Project. So, of course, as soon as it hits Germany and I'm pre I'm pre 1700 certified myself. So I can go ahead and work on anything up to 1500. Uh, I have to have additional certification for medieval stuff, which is pre 1500. So I don't, I don't have that certification. Oh, okay. But most of our records basically go to about 16 or 1500 anyway. So mm -hmm. for my purposes, it's not really that important. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I would like probably look at your German profiles and want to work on those. Okay. See, it's not even Germany at that point. It's the Holy Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're in still. Oh, there's pedigree collapse. Look at that. You Where? got some endogamy yeah. right there because you got some repeating names in Jacob uh, Dolmich. Really? Yeah, look at that. Johannes oh, is the yeah. same. Adam is the same. And then the children, the daughters are different. Dorothy and Elizabeth mm -hmm. were the two different sisters. And then they married different men. And then their children eventually married each other. You see that? Yeah, I do. I do. So, yeah, you're going to find pedigree collapse pretty easily when you go really far back into the records. And then the name starts mm -hmm. to repeat. It's further up the tree that I guess is my direct lineage. So I'm afraid that I'm not as familiar with this that you're you're okay. looking at right now. But um, can you go to the left, uh, Betsy? Go to the. Uh, okay. Sorry, bring everything to the. <laughs> that's it. That, that what you were right. Push it to the right so we can. <laughs> okay, so the Corneals that that that's what's breaking out into these German uh, benners and, and dolmages, which became dolmetches. Mm -hmm. But I think you have to go up. But yeah, then if you follow uh, head north, I guess maybe that's the best way to yeah. do this. Go earlier. I yeah. think she wants to see the Switzers. Oh, okay. Like, there you go. So you still, yeah, keep. Schweitzer. So Johann Schweitzer. So the name was Schweitzer. Oh, no. it, and then it switched. Switzer. There oh. they are again. There's there's three Jacobs on here now. Wow, they must have been in a really small area because they're all overlapping. Do you see that? But you can you can still do you see you have Johann Schweitzer? There's still a plus sign there. That's my kind of more direct lineage. Oh, yeah. okay. There, there you go. go. Right, right. If you were a man, that would be like your Y DNA line. Uh so but your Y Y DNA wasn't passed to you as a lady, so you wouldn't be able yeah. to use that DNA. But uh, if somebody that, you know, your father could do it, actually, your father, if he's still alive, could mm -hmm. do a DNA test with Y-DNA, and then they could follow that Switzer line all the way out. Mm, yeah, well, he's 91. He's still here. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I got my grandmother in a DNA test before she passed away, so I'm glad she did that. Um, mm. You know, you can, you can send him a DNA test. He can just do the test and mail it off, and then you can be the profile. Well, you can be like the DNA manager for that purpose then. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think Y DNA is a swab, right? It's not a. Uh, yeah, I mean they're they're all some kind of nasal swab or or to, you know cheek swab or something. Yeah, I think it was yeah. a cheek swab. It's just uh, it's hard for eighty and ninety year old people to to provide as much saliva. I, I suppose I don't think about that. Cheek, cheek swab is the way to go. With an right, oil. right. I mean, but in any case, there should be enough DNA, you know, when you swab enough to uh, mm -hmm. be able to put that into a container and send, ship it off. I, I, so I would recommend that, you know, if you really want to follow this uh, Schweitzer line, you know, like that, that's something that could be added to your uh, uh, interest, you know, with, with your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. But yeah, it looks like Johann Schweitzer is the last one and then it cuts out, but the Kessel rings keep going. Interesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then Lauer. Yeah. yeah. And so um, how do, is there a way now that we've expanded it with all of the expanding all of the plus signs and so on to be able I, to print this? Uh, yes, I think I've never done it, but I've heard of people. Um, I, is there a way to save it as a file? And then you would. You oh, would to to that that is a great question. <laughs> uh we can click on help yeah there's a help sure. button right there <laughs> no 
How to find out this is all about tree apps. Uh, how to use tree apps. Dynamic tree navigating. It doesn't really talk about printing. No. Um... It, I mean, there are printable versions of things, but they're mm -hmm. going to be a lot more restrictive. You know, I think yeah, you'd have to take again, a screenshot. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to take a screenshot they... of your screen, basically. Yeah. Um, also, if you had like a really big screen, you could fit a lot more into there. I, I actually wish that we were able to take the top part of the screen and drag it up so that we could see more of the active screen. Uh, of the, I agree. Um, dynamic part. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll recommend that and, and see if somebody can do something about that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're, they're always open to feedback. They're always open to new ideas and uh, sure. other concerns. Yeah. It's interesting that we can't, you know, click it to create a PDF or something like exactly. that. Exactly. And I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm, I'm not ruling that out. I just, I don't know how to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it Being that effect. everything is created by users, you know, we haven't thought of everything. <laughs> there's there's mm -hmm. always room for opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, they also have this thing called Hacktoberfest coming up very soon. Uh, this will be an opportunity where they work on stuff just like this. And it could be a brainstorming activity for them. So, you know, maybe it's something we can submit and say, like, hey, we, we saw that there were some things that could be improved on with the dynamic tree. Are you willing to, uh, you know, check it out? Mm -hmm. So those, those guys, uh, you know. At least, I it. mean, the other, the other tree that I was able to, to create, just like the, the one before you expanded it, Betsy, yeah. you know, that um, was a little bit more colorful. The other, I, I, I couldn't even print it to actually kind oh. of match it up, you know, like a puzzle. The like fan chart, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens when we do basic? Oh, that okay. That that's the one I mean. So if I tried to print that and then I go to Adam and just print his to try and put them together, it doesn't quite work. But that's yeah. really the lovely pieces of information that I would yeah. would like to put together, pick in a yeah. in, in yeah. one document. Yeah. I usually just draw mine out. <laughs> I get um, a poster board. <laughs> yes. It's so much nicer anyway. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, not every piece of technology is going to provide you what you want to see. I mean, the pedigree chart mm -hmm. does give this out to second great grandparents. So you can stack those on top of one another potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah, like I said, and not, not every piece of technology is, is going to you know work for what you need. You may have to like find a new avenue. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to invent that avenue, which is yeah. what those app guys are good about doing, that they make new stuff that didn't exist before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we can't. We can't be the only ones to wish to have ever wished for printable trees. Right. Mm -hmm. right. If there's enough interest, I, someone may come up with an, a solution. Awesome. Obituary. I want to correct the spelling on that, but uh, I don't Where, know what sir? the status of this uh, profile is. <laughs> My my uh, OCD is uh, is clicking. It's, it's it's twitching a little bit right now. Well, here, let, let me let me help you, Steve. There, it's hidden. It's, no, I can still see it. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's an open profile. I can work on this. <laughs> well, I'm sure Deborah would not mind you correcting the spelling. I don't want to upset people, but yeah, yeah. Sometimes I have to go through. I I have a tendency to want to just clean profiles up because they they can look pretty messy sometimes and. I, you know, I want to mm -hmm. try to fix some of the uh, formatting for place names and locations and things too sometimes let me um since you have a really strong interest research research wise in switzers um if you you can do this here or on the home page just search for switzer mm -hmm. or uh, click on the name too you can do that and now you're going to get to this page which is going to give you all the Switzers on Wikitree. Including Deborah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, both, you know, um, who married into the family or who were born into the family. And I love this fact that you can, you have all these ways to sort it. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you can see like, what, what have people been doing on the Switzers? Mm -hmm. uh, I see, okay. Yeah, recent you changes and I, I like alpha order and date order and I'll, yeah. I'll, if you put in date order it'll show you the oldest one on all of wikitree which is yes. probably going to be oh here we go england actually and then baron switzerland 
Yeah. And there's Ossenheim. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody is participating in the Sourceathon at the end of the month, um, and you're looking for on source profiles, then you click on sourced, and then you can be working on your surname of interest while contrib contributing towards the, you know, the activity. Well, there's some the in there too. Yeah. How did, oh yes, I did notice that, that, um, that the, the initial hits are the surname that you're interested in. Yeah, and it goes straight kind of, to that. They veer off into closely related or. Well, this is alphabetical. It's taking yeah. you straight to that oh, index. Yeah. So then anything after that is still alphabetical. So Switzer, you know, yep. after that is Swazinski, Swode, Swoboda. Uh, I, I have a friend who's got, who's married into Swoboda. So that's a name I recognize now. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else is? If you look at all 1.2 million of them, yeah, you're going to start at A. <laughs> yeah. Or orphaned. So these are, these are Switzer profiles where there's no profile manager. And oh. you might wish to adopt them. Ooh, some really cool names in there. Avarilla Janetta Switzer, Iris Cirilla Switzer. Wow, just known as Etta. Oh, and that was a jet. That was a Jedcom. So uh, a lot of times when Jedcoms are created, there's not really profile manager associated with them, and there's usually a lot of cleaning up that has to be done on those profiles as well. But if you run if you run across a profile like this where it says no profile manager, just click on adopt this profile. Um. And um, what's this other thing? View the family line. What does that mean? Oh, is that the pedigree? Oh. Oh. Okay. So these are all the orphans that are attached to. So adoptable profiles are highlighted in yellow. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that can help clean up a, a list pretty quickly if you're just looking for everybody in that mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. vicinity. Mm hmm. So, mm, Crytersville, Pennsylvania. Cool. Lots of, lots of cool. rabbit holes to fall into. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you've really uh, already you shown me a lot of things that I wasn't aware of. Um, just uh, mm -hmm. lack of experience. <laughs> well, that's what we're here for. Yes. You going to click on Nathaniel. Nathaniel. Yeah. So. Was this one of your ancestors or, I mean, because it's, it's a Switzer who lives in this village in Germany, but they yeah, don't have any it, additional it, father attached to it, but we know that they go beyond this point. Mm -hmm. uh, well, certainly shows, you know, to have been um, around in the same area, Assenheim and, and, and so Ireland. on, but this is not a name that has surfaced for me before. Interesting, but they still they went to County Limerick where the rest of them went. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking this is a maybe a brother of your direct ancestor, maybe or or at least some someone close to that line. Mm -hmm. uh, so well, that, that's something that, that, you can look into, right? For sure. Yeah, yeah that's right. Hmm. Well, I'm just fascinated by the whole you know moving from Germany to Ireland thing too. It's interesting. And he lived in '98. Good for him. What? Well, that you know, that's an estimation too. So we have to oh, sure, but... whittle that down. No cats. My cat is being very needy right now. <laughs> these long calls. Um, hey, maybe we can show some uh, Jetcom cleanup since we're on this profile. Uh, was this created from a Jetcom? It looks very Jetcom-y to me. It does. Okay. Well, what does that mean? Sorry. What does this mean, jetcom -y? Go ahead, Stephen. Well, Jedcomi doesn't exist as a word. I just made that up. Yeah, but I get it. From, a, from the Jedcom, you know, that usually like ancestry trees, everybody will have their stuff on that site and then they'll import it through a Jedcom to WikiTree and it'll create a profile, but it will dump all of this data that doesn't really make too much sense into it. So it's not really citable. Uh, again, a lot of these extra uh, characters like these at symbols and, and these other notes are in there. Uh, so we have a thing called the JetCom cleanup. Uh, it's an automatic JetCom cleanup button that we can click, and it sort of takes those sources and reformats the page a little bit, so it's a little bit more legible, like a biography. And then okay. you know we go from there, and then we start adding like actual sources. 
It's just that a lot of times it tries to cite the ancestry tree, which is not a source. So we can't even use the ancestry tree itself. Right. Um, So what I just did while Stephen was explaining all that was that I turned on my Wikitree browser extension. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice that it does change the appearance of the profile um, a little bit. This is a free extension that you add to your browser. And it it really, um, it's... To say that it enhances your Wikitree experience is is an understatement. I mean, mm. it's just an explosion of possibilities in terms, and you can customize it. Um, so one of the things that I did was, um, you know, I I put uh, I put the family off to the side as opposed to where you're probably used to seeing it. You know, mm-hmm. um, but the reason that I enabled that, and you can see I've got the there. Okay, that's the browser extension. Now, okay. if I click on that, mm-hmm. um, okay, profile. Steve, where's the uh, AGC? I thought it was built in. I, you can just go to edit, and the button shows up. Uh, oh, okay. The edit right. bar. So, so you edit. don't really have to have the browser extension for that. Okay. Yeah. So, so you have two of them. <laughs> you uh, duplicated why there, it. Why would there be two of them? <laughs> because you must have it. you overloaded it by putting on the browser extension, which probably adds the button, but the button's already there. Okay. You got two <laughs> buttons that do the same A-B-C, thing. AGC automatic <laughs> check. Okay. Yeah, watch this. Are we ready? Oh, I need a I need a drum roll. <laughs> Wait a minute. AGC did not change the profile due to <laughs> the error. Yeah. Fine. Found line marriage within a note section. This is not consistent with the normal format. For, so, no. It it suspects that there's already the fact. So this is wiki coding for putting something in bold, which is something that a JEDCOM wouldn't do. Okay, then we just take that line out, right? Really. If it's if it's finding that as a conflict, so do we just sure just, or just that, unbold it? Right, we'll unbold it. It'll say marriage, okay. and then we'll try to hit the button again and see what happens. Uh, so X out of that first. The X out of the orange box. Uh, should okay. I should I save that? I think I should save that. And then... uh, yeah, c- commit commit change. Uh, do that first. Okay. Fixing formatting. Full save. Now, okay. Now in. we will go try this again. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to do drum roll. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, what happened this time? Uh, in the notes section. <gasps> no, yeah. Marriage, marriage, why? What, what is it? Not consistent with the normal format for an early JEDCOM import. Maybe we just need to rewrite the entire article from scratch. Yeah, I mean, now since this is, I feel fine doing this because this is an orphan profile. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I mean, we are, we are, well, we're not quite into te- seven, pre 1700 territory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're still safe but here. We just on editing. Existed. So, so source S23 doesn't really apply to anything, right? It's referring to a database. It's it's referring to some record somewhere. Maybe it's ancestry. It's trying to reference. Yeah, this is this is nothing. We don't we don't need this. Right, right. So we can still keep his name in there. Well, sure. What what I'll say oh, is he yeah. shows up in a record for John Switzer. So we might want to indicate that John Switzer was in a record that had Nathaniel Switzer's name in it because it would have been his father. You know, like like a, a birth record or a marriage record or something, right? Okay. Are so we, we may sure? have to go to family search. No, no, look, look, look. So okay. John Switzer was his son, it seems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's something you would put in um in ref- yeah. research. There's the URL for the family search. So let's just copy and paste that into a new uh, tab. Yeah. Um well, just the URL itself, I was going to say. Yeah. Because at least this way, then we can get a page on Family Search that has all the documents associated with that. And then if we want to add stuff from Family Search to this profile, then then we can beautify it that way. Mm-hmm. 
because they gave us the entire person's page. Oh, oh of course we're not oh, logged in. <laughs> I forgot to check. I that. Every two weeks, Betsy. That. <laughs> Make sure that button is selected. I swear I've been in and out within two weeks. <laughs> All right. Okay. So no sources. Oh, delightful. One Maybe source. One. One source, one source, <laughs> no title. Okay. So Nathaniel needs a little bit of help. Yeah. And let's look. Well, he's got parents. He's got parents. He goes to the Schweitzers. So this this and is a thing that we saw between the different Switzer kids turning into Schweitzers. It's got to be the same family. So we are we are looking at nathaniel christopher schweitzer senior and then over here nathaniel christopher schweitzer senior okay and his children sorry everybody okay so we think that he might have appeared in the record for john so let's go to john oh look john ireland well that's a lot of information now john has 11 sources you would think though that if it's connected to his father it would show up right because if a source has a father name in there and it's indexed then, then it would also show up on the father's profile right uh, at least the family search what is this i don't know what these sources are oh these are ancestry sources okay yeah. randy so Maybe nothing hasn't been uploaded or identified on Family Search yet. Historicgraves.com. Hmm. Hmm. John Switzer. So at least we have a headstone. Yep. I mean, that's cool. And, and then, depending on what we have here for uh, information on cemeteries on Wikitree, oh, you know, yeah. that could be a source for that. One hmm. of the five original Palatine families that came to Palatine Street in the Commons as tenants of the Barker Ponsonby estate of Kilcooley Abbey in the 1770s. He's also an ancestor of the Switzer family that owned the that owned the famous Switzer store on Grafton Street in Dublin, now known as Brown Thomas. That's cool. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there were a number that that left the Assenheim area and ended up in in ireland as part of that whole palatine um exodus right mm -hmm. in the in the 1700s and so that i mean i have an attestation for again my lineage a copy of it that indicates that they the intention was to go to pennsylvania but unfortunately when the ships left um germany they went to england and then um the queen there was inundated, right, with the, the Palatines because there were something like 17,000 of them. It was one of the first refugee camps ever noted in, in mm. history. And so some of them ended up, a, a small portion, going to Pennsylvania. Some went to um, Ireland um, and were unhappy and went back to Germany or tried to find their own way to America. But then my family did go directly from Ireland to Canada. And so this is like, this is a common um, theme of the Switzers leaving that area and just migrating to, to various areas. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is fascinating. You know, seeing the Palatine, the Palatine migration, and it isn't just as clear cut as going to America, you know, there was these other countries that they would end mm -hmm. up in and mm -hmm. then they would cycle back and forth until they found the right boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's wild. And then thinking about how long it takes us to go from one place to another on a boat, you know, given the conditions on those boats, this wasn't, this wasn't a nice little cruise. This, this was an arduous okay. journey in each case. Oh, yeah. No question. Yeah. No yeah. Question. So, I mean, they really went through a lot just to get to even this location. Mm -hmm. So, my feeling is that we don't have enough information probably well, not at the moment yeah we, we can we can leave it and i'll i, I noted the name and that it's right. a 
it's an adoptable uh, profile. So right. I'll, I'll right. see if I can find any more information about yeah. Nathaniel. You, yeah. Well, you just want to notice Switzer 291. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll get you there. So I'm going to uh, get out without having done anything. Where, where's my return? Um, so we're, we're coming up um, uh, almost to the hour. I wanted to make sure um, that we didn't neglect Michael, Sue, and Sally. Do Thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, Thanks for sharing everything, Elaine. I know. You gave us really good um, material to talk about and show, show things with. So thank you. Um, Michael, Sue, Sally, do you, any of you have questions that you want us to tackle? I just came to listen in. <laughs> okay. All right. No problem, Sue. And uh, Stephen, I'm not meaning to ignore you. you oh, no problem. <laughs> I know Which that, one? I know that you're a <laughs> tomato, tomato bites. Yeah. Um, and Michael and Sally, I don't know if you're, are you there? Can we answer any questions for you? And they're muted if they don't real realize it. Yeah. If you're or they trying... could have walked away from their computer too. I mean, yeah. it happens. Yeah. I am really fascinated by the Switzer line now. You know, that's the thing. <laughs> I always get addicted to like a new line of research, even though they're not related to me. It, it's, it, this is the wiki tree way, right? This is the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Fascinating. Also, I want to go to this village and I want to take a picture of their sign. Because oh, yes. I think it's amazing that this village exists in my mm -hmm. my motherland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, my people are also on my mom's side from Rhineland Palatinate, so it it might not even be that far from where my people are set up. Well, there you go. Well, our my son um, was a history um, major and worked for a year at the Mannheim University. Oh, my. In in Germany. And so um, yeah. it's just unfortunate that I wasn't able to uh, to share. I didn't learn about the the famous, you know, information and signs that are still there for him to go and visit at the time. But um, yeah, well, we'll, we'll have to make a journey. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I mean, that's that's my people, too. Uh, Mannheim, mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. Bad Durkheim. Yeah, I mean, that's the same area. Yeah, cool. Um, is everybody comfortable on how to add photos to their profile? Would it would you like a demonstration of that? Sure, sure. That Added any photos. Okay. okay. So because I have one, I was cleaning up my desktop yesterday and I have a photo sitting on my desktop that uh, I need to add. So um, this is one of my uncles. Um, and so as you can see, I already have some some um, images. Um, so here's your the image tag tab. Been, uh, I'm curious, how do you pronounce his name? Uh, Shen Chong. Shen Chong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, or Robert. <laughs> <Was his name? laughs> yeah. Um, so I've already got pictures of him, but I have of. Uh, fourth one that I want to add. So the way to do that, you go to the image uh, page and say, click here to upload, um, choose the file. And it's, let's see, on my desk. I don't know. Can When I'm screen sharing, can you all see my, my little- uh, uh, Negative. Uh, it's probably okay. protecting your private uh, information. That's good. Okay. So I'm gonna, just going to select my, my file. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. It went gray, but there was nothing that overlaid it. Okay, I'm always curious about that. Um, yeah. now you have to you have to at least say 30 words to the effect of you know how you got it. Um, and I'm going to say that that, that is, is that a requirement? 30 words? 30. Oh. I'm sorry. 30 characters. <laughs> 30 characters. 30. 30 letters. I, I think one time I tried to write. I took this photo, and it wasn't enough. Yep. <laughs> so um scanned from family photo collection. Um you do what we're very um careful on WikiTree to honor 
um, you know, copyright and ownership. Of course, of yeah. Images. So yeah, um, like see, if I were to have found this photo on Family Search, I would or Ancestry, I would contact that person and say, mm -hmm. "Do you mind maybe yeah. do this or find and a grave?" Too, too yeah. many people will copy pictures from there and post them. And it's like, no, you can't assume the source. Right. Um, and I also I also take photos of tombstones, so I know that I don't have to borrow the fo the, the right. photo from somebody else. I can show that I am the profile or I am the copyright holder of that image. So when I upload it, then there is no issue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's see in the bad bar elephants. What? I saw some of your autofill from other oh, images. Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> there we go. Um, actually, you know what? I should use. Okay, uh, location Taipei, and so um, it starts autofill as I'm writing Taipei. Um, I never know what to do here because was it known as Taiwan? I think this would be correct. Forty nine. Yeah. Well, I mean, before it was Taiwan, it was Formosa. Actually, what happens if I type Formosa? Huh. Argentina, any other places with the name Formosa in it? Yeah, no. Maybe you have to put in Taipei Formosa? Okay. No. Uh, so there's I, are there no I, options? I, it's probably because we just don't have much built yeah. up uh, for Taiwan on Wikitree. I mean, I know that other projects like Germany Project make sure to have all the different variants you know, in, in the, the database. So like if, if we put in something older than 1806, it should show up as Holy Roman Empire and not as, you know, the German Confederation. Right. Um, as an example. So I'm thinking that it's just not as developed yet. And you don't have to go with those drop downs. Like you can type in anything you want, honestly. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm doing math. And my father's age, therefore his age. And so I'm going to say this was about 1953 that's interesting too because usually when we select a date then the locations are based off the date so you would think that they would do that on the photos end you know where the date comes first and then the location so i don't know um don't know. but all of this you know if i were to get more confirm information it you know can be edited later you can go back yeah. um it is a photo great right? thing about wikis yeah um, and so I'm going to upload it. Ooh, the old photo has a photography studio name on it. Can we still count it as scan from family collection? I do not know. That was a question. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, but that's a good, great question. So. But that's something that we may have to redirect. There is a genealogist that focuses on just copyright stuff. So. Oh, you're talking about um, Judy Russell? Maybe Judy Russell, yeah, her her website would probably talk about that. That's that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sort of wondering if people are living, they could still claim a copyright to it if they've been dead for at least eighty years. Then there's a little bit more leeway with that. Yeah, I mean, photography but, studios. It's, it's very difficult to tell with them, you know, and who's going to go after you for uploading something like that from. 80 years ago. But what about what about if your great grandparents, they paid the photographer, they hired the photographer for a session, yeah, they, get, they get paid for it, right, then the transactions been performed. Um, I mean, I would have to assume that if there's like a making those decisions. <laughs> Well, we, we can... It becomes very complex, doesn't it? My mother was a professional photographer, but she was also a, a colorist. So as an example, she would take this particular black and white photo and um, ask for a cloth sample of his suit, if possible, his tie, whatever, and, and use oil paints to create a colored image. Mm -hmm. And and so again, yeah. she has another layer of copyright um, yeah. because of her new, artistry. She created yeah. a new thing now, so she made mm -hmm. art on top of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It resets copyright. 
or it's a yeah, derivative so, of an existing work. Yeah. Boy, that, that is so complicated. I, I don't like to get into those conversations. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but I, that's just an example of, you know, yeah. while she worked for a particular studio, the mm -hmm. studio's stamp would be on the back of the, mm -hmm. the you know, the but not necessarily her name as the artist. As yeah. I mean, at that time they were called color uh, uh, technologists or color technicians. That's what it was. Yeah, um, it's like those those Thomas Kincaids or something, right? Where mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. guy's name is on everything, but there was like mm -hmm. a bunch of other artists that actually did the work, and they never got exactly. credit on there. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, I don't I didn't mean to derail, but it, it no, does become very complex. <laughs> these are this is great. This is very open ended, and I mean, I love talking about just anything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Stephen had a good comment too, that um, he found the photographer linked with the studio, um, but who was no longer living. So, but that that must have taken a bit of detective work, I'm sure. Yeah, we are detectives effectively. Um, I occasionally put on a bat suit and fly in the night. <laughs> so there, there, there's my photo. Um, awesome. And if you wish to make that the primary photo, which I don't, but um, you could do that down here. You could check it and set as primary. If you wanted to make it his the background image, you could do that. Um, and that just that might be a little obnoxious to have a repeating image as the background, but uh... <laughs> yeah. Well, I sort of wonder with uh, with a photo like this, you wouldn't see him. You know, it you, would be cropped off too, yeah, because you get the edges, so you'd you see. It looks like the Taipei 101 on his uh, left hand side, actually. Good, um, good eye, yes. Oh, is that what that is? Well, yeah, the Taipei Taipei 101 looks like that. Yeah. It's the skyscraper. I'm in, I'm impressed that you know know that building. I, I know skyscrapers. I, I I'm a kind of a infrastructure nerd. Yeah. Um, Lego, of course, yes. Uh, that's that's one of the things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, if you have an image like that, if it's an elongated image, yeah, it's going to cut off. So generally, the background images are more of like patterns. Like somebody wants to put up a tartan because it's a Scottish person. Yeah, then the tartan profile or the tartan image will repeat. And so you'll see that as the background against the edges. Right, uh, that's right. That's pretty right. much the only thing I would use background for. I can show you where I've done that. Uh, oh, it's a greenwood. It's a greenwood. Uh, we can't figure... Where's... Where's her background? Not I display? that's weird because I had I had given her that background from one of those photos. Yeah, mm. she was very passionate about the Menzi tartan. Well, yeah, I don't see a tartan established with that profile. It just shows the four. Well, see, that's one version of the. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Clan Menzies then. Maybe you still need to actually upload that one to her profile directly. Yeah, thought I did. Well, anyway, we, um, we all think we did things in late night, you know, editing, right? <laughs> it's just my wiki tree and come back head. to it like six months later. You're like, wait, this looks different. Yeah. Um, well, this profile did you do it to? <laughs> <laughs> so, and if I, if you wish to, um, to put the photo within the bio. As per, you know, if it's pertinent to what you're saying, and instead of having it along the side, you want to see it right within the text, you just copy this and you paste it within the bio. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of flexibility. Yeah, and there's ways to thumbnail it. You can see below that that there's like additional captions, you know, or, or sizes can be changed or alignment can be changed. So if you want to make it left aligned instead of right aligned or centered, you know, you can do it that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, here it is. Um, any other questions? No, not for myself. Thank you. You've been incredibly helpful. Oh, so, yeah. if I was to wish to connect with either of you, mm -hmm. yes. Um, um, let's let me um let me just get out of screen share, and uh, I am. This, this is my profile, Co31. So you can just send me a message through my profile. And yeah. Stephen I'll do the same. Is, yeah, Stephen will do his. Mine is a little bit longer. I am Greenwood, 3667. 
Yes, and if are are you on Discord, Elaine? Oh, I'm sorry. What's that? What's uh, that? Discord is a, like a, a chat a chat platform that WikiTree uses very heavily. Mm. So. Uh, no, I haven't used it. Yeah. Okay. Well, this will work just as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not required, but we do a lot of communication for major events and our thons. Will, will Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. No awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. I want to say thank you so much to everybody for coming tonight. It was, um, I, uh, I thought we'd, I said to Stephen, we're going to have to tap dance a little tonight because we don't have any volunteers, but it, uh, it worked out. Well. well, thank you again. Good You're night, welcome. everyone. Good night. Thank you, Elaine. Bye-bye. See you soon. Uh,